To me, one of the most fun aspects of being a data engineer is creating different automations. And in particular, one area that's really important is CICD, which stands for continuous integration and continuous deployment. And this is an area where you can automate your testing, your release strategy through tools like GitHub. But I also understand that this concept can be a little vague or unclear if you haven't seen it in action. So what I wanna do in today's video is show you how you can use GitHub to automate the testing and deployment of your new changes. And this is an example of why people really like code-based tools, like let's say DBT amongst others, because of the ability to automate and do things like this. This can be applied not only to your deployments, but as we'll mostly cover in this video, the idea of automating your data quality checks. But with that said, let's now hop into this video talking about building a CI workflow. To create a workflow file, we're gonna go under GitHub and we're gonna create a new folder called workflows. And within here is where we can put all of the different actions, workflows that we want. Let's create a new file. And these are all YAML files. These are how the instructions are built. We're going to call this one ci.yaml. And this is going to be a workflow that every time a pull request is opened, it will automatically read the current branch that's trying to be merged. So the development branch and test the changes. I have a templated file rather than watch me type it all out. The name here is saying the name of the workflow as it shows up in the UI once we deploy it is going to be called CI. It's not necessarily the same as this. The on section is saying on what triggers should this workflow run. In this case, we're saying on pull requests and there's different triggers that you can set and they're all in the documentation for GitHub Actions. Feel free to check it out. And what we're saying is we only want a pull request on main to be this trigger. So we don't want pull requests on anything else. If that happens, then run this workflow. The other option here is workflow dispatch. And that essentially just means manually triggering. It allows you to be able to push a button and you can also trigger this workflow if you want. Now underneath here, you have jobs and the jobs, you can have as many as you want. In our case, I just have one job because it's fairly simple. We don't need to overcomplicate this. We're calling it build and deploy. The next thing here within the job is runs on. And this is saying, what type of virtual runner do you want to use? And in this case, it's Ubuntu latest, which is a Linux version. And you can, I think, do Windows or maybe a Mac if you want. But this is the standard and it's free to use for at least a certain amount of limits here. Next is that ENV section. Here is where we're setting these two environment variables, but this time we're passing secrets. And then when it runs, that is what will be set and ready to use this here. So that's how it all works together. Now down to the steps, this is where it might get a little bit confusing. At least for me, it was when I first started. And step one is saying, check out branch. And this is going to check out the current branch that's being part of the workflow here, the one that we're trying to merge. And you might be wondering, how does it even know to do that? And if you see here, it says uses actions slash checkout v3. And I'll show you where this comes from. Basically, there are community marketplace pre made steps that you can use, and it just works for you. And all you have to do is import it. If you go up here to marketplace, here's where you can find tools to improve your workflow. So let's go to actions. And in this case, let's just look up checkout. And here we can see this is the one that we're using checkout v3. It explains what it's doing, it's going to look for your current branch and be able to use it and understand that this is the context. And then it gives you a bunch of usage, you can add a lot more. We're just doing the most simple version of this. And the next is set up Python, which is also part of this. So if I were to do set up Python, we can find this action here, and it'll show you exactly how to use it. You can sell the version and what script you want to run if you wanted to run something right away. All these things here, there's a lot more than just what I'm showing you, but this is how it works. The next step now is a run command, which is going to run as if you were running in a terminal. And we're going to say install dbt snowflake. And then after that, we're going to say deploy and test models. We're going to build our entire project. What should happen now is when we push this, it's going to already run this check for us. So let's see if this works. I'm going to get push it should already run this workflow once we open the pull request. So let's go ahead and do this here. And there it is. And right away, it's running this workflow that we just created. And if we click details, we can see what's happening. We can see it has this default setup and post checkout. That's just by default. It checked out the branch, set up Python. So it already ran that action, installed DBT. It's going through and doing all this stuff just as if we were locally and it's just doing it on a hosted machine and in real time. And you would think that this would take a while, but it actually isn't that long. It's fairly efficient. And then at that point, now it's going to deploy and we can monitor the logs here. Let's see what we got. Target CI, DBT CI. All of this is going to be updated and tested. 
in that schema. Now, every single time we have a pull request, this is going to happen and it's going to check the current branch that you're working on. Right now, imagine you're making changes to your models or you're adding something new. This can now test it for you before we ever even get to production. Now that pass, we have this check mark and we're good to merge. From here forward, every time we do a pull request, we're gonna get that automated check, which is a great catch-all and a great way to automate our process. Hopefully now you have a better understanding of what CICD looks like in practice, and in particular, how it can be used with tools like DBT and GitHub to automate your data quality checks. Thanks as always for watching and I'll see you at the next video.